Welcome to our review on genetic engineering and gene therapy. The first thing we need to do then is understand what we're actually talking about when we're talking about genetic engineering. Quite simply, genetic engineering is a way of changing the genes of an organism without that process of selective breeding. So when we've actually produced an organism by genetic engineering, that's called a genetically modified organism. So how we actually go about doing this then is we're going to be using enzymes. So we take an enzyme and it cuts the DNA to obtain a particular gene. So we've identified the gene we want for a certain characteristic and then we use a specific enzyme to cut the DNA to get that gene. We can then take the gene and insert it into another organism's DNA. An example of where we've used this is in making insulin. So in the past, insulin used to come from pig pancreases in the abattoirs. But obviously people like vegetarians would have had objections to having insulin that came from dead pigs. So these days what we do is we actually use bacteria to make perfect human insulin. Because what we've done is we've taken the human insulin gene from a human being and inserted it into the bacterium. So all of those bacteria then will make human insulin. In terms of the advantages for us, number one, we've got enough insulin for every diabetic, so there's no shortage. Secondly, there's no risk of transferring any diseases from the pigs to humans. And finally, if anyone was a vegetarian, there's nothing that they could object to. One area that there's been a lot of work done is on genetically modified crop plants. So two examples I've given you here. First one is a substance called golden rice. Now what they've actually done here is taken the gene for beta carotene from daffodils and put it into the rice plant. So that means that the rice will actually contain beta carotene, which is really important because when humans eat beta carotene, we change that into vitamin A. And vitamin A is really important for good eyesight. If we don't get enough vitamin A, then we can develop blindness. So this has been one way of providing enough vitamin A for children in developing countries without any extra cost to avoid them going blind. Second example there is our cotton plant. And what we've actually done here is we've made a cotton that's resistant to caterpillar pests. So instead of having to spray all our cotton plants with chemical pesticides, then what we do is we've taken a gene from a bacterium that codes for a toxin so that if the back if the actual caterpillars try and eat our cotton plant then it actually poisons them so it's like built-in pest protection in terms of how we actually carry out genetic engineering then got a little flow chart here to help you remember the stages first thing we're going to select our desired characteristic then we're going to isolate the responsible genes take those genes and insert them into other organisms and then finally replicate those organisms so we've got many copies of it. Second thing that we're going to look at is gene therapy. Now this is where we're actually going to change a person's genes to try to cure a disorder and the best example of where they're trying this is in cystic fibrosis. Thing to remember though is that in gene therapy we're not making permanent changes to the genes it's only temporary if however we were able to insert these genes into the gamete or the zygote then because obviously every cell that comes after that is a copy or has the same DNA as that then all of the new cells would have the healthy gene that is however genetic engineering not gene therapy gene therapy is a temporary change Genetic engineering is that permanent change in all of those cells.